KLA. This is very cool. Just earlier today, just, what, a couple hours ago, was watching this guy on television on the uh, Glenn Beck show over on Fox News. And uh, Glenn Beck is a huge fan of Patrick Bet David and uh, people helping people. In fact, Glenn Beck has done a commercial on behalf of Patrick and PHP. Listen to this. Hi, it's Glenn Beck. Fixing this country starts with getting your own house in order. Well, recently I came across a man who is strengthening America by helping citizens get strong themselves. When Patrick Bet David talks about his company, People Helping People, he sounds more like he's starting a movement. Patrick's message is saving America through the principles of free enterprise and financial independence. Right people on. People helping people. It empowers those who still believe in the American dream. Is that you? If you understand financial basics, you can make smart investments. Living free from debt, achieving prosperity starts with financial education. And if you want a chance to build your own wealth, People Helping People welcomes you to join its network of financial services and agents. Call People Helping People. 877-788-4366. 877-788-4366. The American dream starts with a hand up, not a hand out. People helping people. 877-788-4366. All right, so that's Glenn Beck uh, supporting Patrick Bet David, the founder and CEO of PHP, which stands for People Helping People. And, and Patrick, Glenn just laid it out, and I'm thinking, dude, if you if you got Glenn already, in, you don't need Frank Pastore endorsing you, you know? How are you? Welcome to the show. I'm doing great. By the way, you did a great job last week emceeing the KKLA event. Thank you. That was a blast. It that was. was. very cool. You know, they had 125 people come forward. you got to be night. kidding me. I no, know it was, was a awesome. packed house, 3,500 people or something there. Yeah, yeah. We had 120. When Greg Laurie gave the invitation at the end, uh, 125 people Isn't came forward, amazing? either first time or rededication. So that's just awesome. That's excellent. So listen, let's go back, man. Who are you? What are you? What, what are you doing here? I mean, you got Glenn Beck. I see you on television. Your server got shut down. How many people hit it today? Thirty-five thousand views are apparently. So well, I, we we had to buy a server earlier this week. I told my I said we need an additional server. So we called them. We got an additional server. They said everything's going to be fine. You're going to be fine. And all of a sudden, I'm getting yeah. a call. Your entire thing shut down. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I tried to. I mean, when I watched you here in studio, I, I hopped on my laptop. It's like, dude, it would not even open. <laughs> so, so obviously, a lot of people are wondering what is this people helping people, and we're going to get to that. But Pat, Pat Patrick, Bet David, who are you? I mean, what's your story? Who is who is this guy? Listen, I'm just a simple kid. I remember, uh, you know, for us, I grew up in Iran. I lived there for quite some time. Uh, we were we were there when the whole war took place between Iran and Iraq. And I remember wow. being a kid. Uh, we said this earlier today, also on the Glenn Beck show. We dreamt about one day coming to America. I mean, this was a fantasy to us. We would literally watch movies, and we would say, just one day, God, give us the opportunity to go to America. We escaped Iran. We went to Germany a couple years there. From there came to U.S. I'm a kid that was an average kid in school. I failed most of my classes. I failed biology. I failed ceramics. I had a hard time in school. I was good in math, but everything else I had a very hard time with. And I got out of high school. Your traditional thing you're supposed to do is go to college, do that part. I joined the military. was at the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault. I had a blast over there. Got out of the military. Got involved in the health club business. And I met a mentor of mine. I never work in, um, forget working in the uh, health club business. I met a mentor of mine, and I asked him, I said, you know, I want to get involved in an industry that can give me a life. I can do a lot. I can make an impact. At the same time, I can also be financially independent. What industry do you recommend? And uh, he told me, he says, do you follow sports? I said, I sure do. He says, what do you like? I said, I like baseball and basketball. Oh, great. He says, what would you say are the rich sports in America? I said, I guess baseball and basketball. Yeah. And this is a very wealthy guy. He's done very well in business. He started shopping.com. He started home club, sold it to home base. Very wealthy man, but he was very direct. He was an ex-Navy SEAL, so he didn't play games. I love it. He said, Patrick, I got to tell you this. He says, the rich sports in America are not baseball and basketball. He says, do you know why? I said, why? He says, do you know what kind of companies advertise in baseball and basketball games? I said, tell me. He said, beer, Coca-Cola, Nike, and McDonald's. He says, do you know why? I said, no clue. He says, because poor people buy those things. And I said, listen, I buy every one of those things. He that's says, right. well, they're talking to you. And I was offended. I said, you know, that's not something nice to say to somebody. He says, but let me tell you the rich sports in America. I said, tell me. He said, golf and tennis are the rich sports in America. He says, do you know who sponsors golf and tennis tournaments? I said, no clue. He said, insurance companies, ING, Allianz, Hartford, all Right. He says, because the wealthy people understand this, the rest doesn't. And if you want to learn it, you got to hurry up and get involved in that industry. So I left the health club business. I went and worked right down the street here. Matter of fact, across from the building, you had Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. Yeah. And then I got involved in another financial firm. I was there for about seven and a half years, did very well, but the company got to a point where their vision was going towards one direction. Mine was going to a complete different direction. And September 25th, we hit the top position of the company of that company. 
and I woke up at uh, 4.30. My wife, if you meet her, she's a sweetheart. You'll fall in love with her instantly. She's a total opposite of me. Everybody loves my wife. My father and my wife are always together. She's just the <laughs> sweetest thing in the world, right? So she, she, she makes up for my side. But I remember when uh, I woke up at 4.30, I said, baby, she said, what? I, I said, I, said I, just can't, I just can't do this anymore. 4.30, I said, today... We got to resign and we got to do something. She said, what are you talking about? We just did this. We're doing it. We got a good life. We just got married three months ago. Mm. I said, we got to make a move. And it's interesting. September 25th, we left. We had a meeting with our guys. And uh, we told them the vision of what we need to be doing and where America headed towards and what we need to do our part. I feel like it's a responsibility of ours to go out there and make a difference and fight for the people here that they give me an opportunity to come to America. It's my responsibility to do something about it. And that's how PHP got started. We had nothing prepared, nothing at all, not a website, not a application, not a form, not a back office, nothing. And uh, we had all our savings, and I said, I'm all in. This is all I'm doing. I can tell you that I'm doing nothing else but PHP, people helping people. October 20th, we became to prove. We've been around now one year. We just had our one-year birthday on the 20th of October, and now we have close to 2,500 agents. We've sold well over a half a billion dollars of insurance. Uh, we're in 25 states, and, I mean, I can't tell you what's been happening. We've been blessed. And uh, this cannot happen, by the way, and I told our guys when we got started. They said, how do you know this is going to happen? I said, I have no clue. I just know all their stars are lined up in our favor, and God's on our side. I said, mm. I don't know why I believe that. I just believe it is going to happen, and it did. All right, so let me get this right. So you grow up in Iran. Uh, you escape that country at the, re the revolution. Mm -hmm. Go through Germany. Find your family comes to the United States. Where did you grow up? Where'd you grow up? Where's home? Here, Glendale, California. Okay, right, right here. Okay, in Glendale. Oh yeah, Glendale. Okay, okay. All right. So then you, uh, after high school, you get involved with the. Uh, you sign up in the military, hundred first airborne, URA. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then you come out of that, you get involved in the uh, health club business. Mm -hmm. and you talk to this rich guy, mm -hmm. and he basically says, "No, no, you don't want to do the baseball thing, you uh, <laughs> and the basketball thing. You want to do the golf, tennis thing because that's where money people go." Sure. So you get involved in that and the financial services businesses. You do very well. What was the one idea that woke you up at 4.30 in the morning and you said, hey, baby, I got to resign? I mean, Great why question. would you stop that? Yep. I mean, you're, you're, the money's rolling in. You're successful. You're living the American dream. And it's like, why would you retire or change course at the top of your game? That is the question of the day. I've been asked that question I don't know how many times. I'll tell you how this whole thing got started. March of 2009. Uh, we had an event. I went to Pebble Beach. Certain events took place. I took Dudley Rutherford actually with me to Pebble Beach. We went you know together. Dudley? Yeah, absolutely. We're great friends. Oh, man. Uh, Pastor Dudley and I went to Pebble Beach. We had a great time together for three days. Uh, we were together at the Lakers game seven, by the way. Ten rows off the floor. We had a great time together. He gave okay. me a very hard time about that because <laughs> I ran out of gas on that day on the way to the game. So you know how he is. Yes. But uh, uh, I remember March of '09. I had dinner at Miramar Hotel uh, with George Will. And George Will was a keynote speaker that day. And one of my friends, Bill Vogel, he invited me. We went and had dinner that night. Okay. And I'll never forget this now because I had never been introduced to politics. I had never been introduced to uh, uh, the things that's taking place in America. I'm just a business guy that wants to go out there and, you know, win for his family. It's very simple for me. Right. And uh, I remember that day when George Will gave, the gave his message. I came out. I, you know, I, had, I got obsessed. I got obsessed with studying uh, business with politics and what's happening to America and all these different things that happened. Mm. And uh, so what I did is I established a relationship with anybody that had to do with that area. So I called Michael Reagan. You know who Michael Reagan is? Of course, is. yeah. Three months after that event on March 29th when uh, George Will spoke, my wife and I got married uh, at uh, uh, Glendale Hilton, actually. We had a okay. nice, my wife, I mean, she's a, she's a special woman. She put a wedding for 450 people. This is three months after this whole thing's taking place. This woman is out of the world. Awesome. married a week later we make a decision in our company we said here's what we're going to do every year we're going to take our key leaders to the white house so we took 16 guys to the white house we said every one of us we need to find out what america is all about why is it that all of us fight to come to america why is it that we're coming here why is it that we don't go to russia why don't we go to china why don't we go to you know Port why, portugal why don't we go to germany i mean these places are nice places why do we come to america there's got to be something special about it so we took 16 of our guys to the white house on july 4th 5th the following week, we put an event ticket at J.W. Marriott with 800 people. They'll never forget that day. The event was called Saving America, Doing the Impossible. Three-day event. We fed everybody dinner. Uh, Michael Reagan was one of the keynote speakers. Dudley Rutherford was one of the keynote speakers. Larry Greenfield from Claremont Institute. Sure, yeah. Uh, we fed everybody dinner. We had, uh, uh, we had, I was dressed as George Washington, a Middle Eastern George Washington. <laughs> Makes no sense. <laughs> My wife was dressed as Lady Liberty. We had a 40-foot Mount Rushmore on the stage, 14-foot Statue of Liberty, awesome. 40 American flags. 
And we came out of that place saying, you know what? There is a special sizzle in this place. We had a bunch of guys that we decided this is a cause, this is a crusade, this is a movement, this is bigger than anything else. And from there on, three months later, after that event in July, September 25th is when I resigned, and October 20th, PHP became official. So that's how the whole thing got started. All right, so people helping people is about what? What is it that you do? How are you helping people? You know, if you look at it right now, I can tell you this. You know, a lot of arguments. My parents grew up, they had a lot of arguments over money. I look at my friends' families, they go through arguments with money. I look at my most of my friends that I look at, their relatives that passed, their fathers, their parents, they were so stressed out with finances and they had no clue what to do with it. No clue what to do with it. There's a lot of people that make money. There's some people that don't make a lot of money, but even with the money they make, they don't know what to do with it. What we do at PHP is we educate people on the basics of money. And it doesn't matter whether you make two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars per year or you make forty, fifty thousand dollars per year. At the end of the day, the concepts can help out anybody from the average income earner to the top income earner. So that's mainly what we do as far as educating people. But also on the top side of it, I believe at a time like this, you know, if you look at it, my opinion and what I say all the time is this. If we really want to help save America, we're going to save America through bringing back the free enterprise system and hope to American families. Yeah, I that, believe- that's what Glenn Beck was talking about. That's right. I mean, that's-, that's why he's a huge fan of yours is because it's it's free markets, it's free enterprise, yes. it's entrepreneurs, it's, you know, empowering the individual to go out there and have success. Think about it, Frank. I mean, I was at Rafi's Kebab earlier today. You know Rafi's place. They're yeah. just, they got incredible food. I was there earlier today. My buddy over there, he was my best man. His name is Armon, very special guy. We go way back. Nobody in a million years, Frank, said that him and I were going to amount to anything. Nobody. We were not good kids. We didn't do well in school. We didn't have the degrees. We were not. We are the underdog. We are the total Rocky Balboas. You're not supposed to do it. You're just supposed to be an average Joe. You're supposed to go through a lot of challenging times, but something special happened in our hearts, and we wanted to do something. We wanted to prove a point. We wanted to make our family proud of us. We wanted to go out there and do something big, and we did, and I believe everybody out there, even, even you, you know, the person that's listening right now, you yourself, you, you want to win for your wife. You want to win for your kids. You want to win for your husband. You want to make your family proud. You want to go out there and do something big you know deep down inside that somehow some way god gave us those special gifts that we can do go out there and go do something magically big if we Mm. make the decision to do it and with free enterprise everything is possible as long as you're willing to work you know i got an article here i love talking about this just about three weeks ago i did a show and one of the things i wanted to study was i wanted to study the hours of workers in america hours of workers in america and how many hours americans work now versus how many hours americans work 200 years from now, 200 years ago. Okay. And it was very interesting to me because of this. If you think about it, if you think about it, there's a lot of people saying we have challenges, we're doing this, we're doing that, I'm going through this, I'm going through that, all these different tough times that a lot of us are going through. And I can tell you about myself, when I was going through financial difficulties, I wasn't working very hard. Mm. I was waiting for something to be easy to come in a way and help me become financially independent. Something easy to say, Patrick, you're such a nice guy. Here's a multi six figure year salary. You're just awesome. You got yeah. great jokes. That's not going to happen. So when I looked at this, these were some of the numbers. You're going to be blown away by this. U.S. Department of Interior. U.S. Department of Interior, 1883. Frank, 1830. Average American per week. How many hours do you think the average American worked per week in 1830? Well, let's see. If you got eight hours a day, five days a week, you know, that's 40 hours a week working, and it's probably a difficult time back then, probably 55. 69.1 hours per week. Wow. That's what we worked during that time. In 1900, it was the first time we cracked 50. We worked 58 and a half hours per week. Today, the average American works 39.7 hours per week. If you look at leisure time of today versus 1880, in 1880, the average American leisure time for their lifetime, they had 43,000 hours of leisure time. The average American today has 246,000 hours of leisure time. We have forgotten what it is to work. You see, back in the days, Americans were known for being workers. We were salesmen. We went out there. Sales was a very normal thing that everybody did. Right. Recently, just because everybody links sales to car salesmen or something like this, we think salesmen are horrible people. We don't want to talk to salesmen. You know, one of the things that shocks me, I remember when we first came to America, we used to have a lot of people that knocked on our doors. I can't think of the last time somebody knocked on my door to sell me anything. Quite honestly, I'm not happy with that. I'd love to have somebody come knock on our doors. Let us reject it. Let us say, I know tomorrow we're going to have 50 people at our that's door right, saying, that's hey, right. Patrick, I want to <laughs> say it. But, but my point to you being is that's the way that 
we were able to go out there and do it because that, again, is America. That's something that we all have a shot to have that line. All right, so is the takeaway work harder? I mean, is that part of people helping people? Is that, hey, it's no longer a 40-hour week? I think at the end of the day, what I can tell you about myself is one of the quotes that moves me a lot is a, it's very simple. This is what it says. Mankind is lazy until something catches his or her heart. Mm. Mankind is lazy until something catches his or her heart. I remember growing up, I used to say, you know, I cannot believe my mom. I'm sick. She stays with me. She makes soup for me. I complain. She still sits next to me. I'm sweating. She puts a towel on top of my forehead. She wakes me up. She still hasn't uh, ate anything or slept. She brushes my teeth. She puts clothes on me. She makes sure I'm warm. She takes me to school. Then she goes to work. She comes, picks me up. She cooks dinner. She still hasn't slept. And I used to grow up. I could never be like my mom and dad. I could never be somebody. But I can because something caught their heart, and that mm. was me. Mm. And I think one of the things that a lot of people go through, they say, you know, I can never be like Frank Pastor. He's just a hard work. He was a special kid with talent that made it to Major League. No, something caught Frank Pastore's heart. Something caught Glenn Beck's heart after 1995. Right. Being, something caught our hearts. So I think when that happened, I remember in, in, it was in late 90s, my father. Right, had, uh, you have your own show on Sundays at <laughs> noon. I know that. Okay, I got to take a break, bro. Sure. We're checking in with Patrick Bet David, founder and CEO of People Helping People. He was on Glenn Beck today. That will replay tonight at 11 o'clock over on Fox. You can watch Petra, Patrick Bet David and uh, he and Dudley Rutherford are buddies out at Shepherd of the Hills. His show, Saving America, is heard Sundays at noon right here on KKLA. And we'll continue straight ahead with Patrick Bet David. And we'll talk further about people helping people here on the Frank Pass Story Show at 99.5 KK. All right, 99.5 KKLA FM Los Angeles as we continue here at the Frank Pass Story Show. Happy Friday. Being Friday means you can follow along on our Frank Cam over at frankcam.com or a uh, little webcast into what's going on here in the studio. My guest is Patrick Bet David, founder and CEO of People Helping People. He was on with Glenn Beck today, and uh, it's going to replay on Fox tonight at 11. And here's just a little bit of the exchange between Glenn Beck and uh, Patrick Bet David. And Glenn Beck's a huge fan. Of Patrick, and especially what Patrick is doing with his organization, People Helping People. Here's what happened today. Patrick is an interest has an interesting story. Patrick, you started out in Iran. I did, I did definitely, and uh, I uh, fell in love with this place. This place is a very special country. Uh, went to school, didn't do too well in school. I had roughly a 1.8 GPA in high school. Wow. Uh, failed a ton of my classes. Did very well in uh, uh, math. Right afterwards, joined the military. I was at the 101st Airborne Division, Air Assault. Um, had a great time, got out, got involved in business, and um, I never forget when one of my mentors said, you got to become an entrepreneur. I got involved in the financial industry, uh, started off with a large firm out of Beverly Hills, then went to another firm, uh, became a chairman of that company, and then uh, last year, September 25th, I resigned from that firm, and uh, October 20th, we became official company, uh, PHP People Helping People. All right, so this brand new company, People Helping People, Patrick D Pat David, uh, I want to know what that is a little more specifically. And your show is heard Sundays here on KKLA it Nude, is. and it's entitled Saving America. And I want to know, okay, so how are you trying to save America? So let's do that one first. G give me what you're trying to do in order to, quote, save America. I know Glenn Beck had mentioned something about empowering entrepreneurs, and it's about free enterprise and all that. And it sounds like from your story, that's a big part of what it is. Here's how simple it is for me. I remember being a kid. My father told me a story, and it always stuck with me. I'll never forget this. Very simple story. So here's a father trying to teach his son about how he can survive by himself. And he wants to teach him uh, to be a man. And one day he wakes him up. He says, son, today I'm going to go to work. And I want you to go out there and make $5 today. Today, you need to go out there and make $5 today on your own. So the father goes to work. The son stays home. He doesn't do anything. He watches TV. He plays games. He's not doing anything. And father's about an hour away of coming home. And the son goes to mom and says, hey, mom, uh, dad told me I need to make $5 today. Can you just please lend it to me if you, <laughs> if you give me the $5? Because, you know, he's going to get mad if he comes. And mom feels bad. Says, you know what, son? Not a problem. Here's $5. So father comes home. And father says, so did you make your $5 today, son? And the son goes up, yes, dad, I'm, you're going to be very proud of me. Here's $5. Gives father the $5. The father takes the $5, throws in the fireplace. It burns. Kid starts crying, says, how could you do something like this? This is $5 that I made today. He says, you did not make $5 today. Goes to sleep. The next morning he wakes up. He says, son, I want you to go out there and make $5 today. So the son says, dad, please. He says, no, you got to learn how to work. 
So the next day, father goes to work. The kid calls the mom. Mom says, I'm not giving you no more money. If I give it to you, my husband's going to throw it in fire. I'm not losing no more $5. Right, right. So the kid leaves. He goes knocking on all the doors. He asks his auntie, his friends, his relatives. He's begging people for $5. And he finally gets it. Everybody lends him a dollar here, a dollar there, 50 cents. Adds up to $5. Father comes home. And the father comes home. He says, son, let me see the $5. Where's the $5? He puts his hand and says, daddy, going to be very proud. I made $5 today. Father takes the five dollars, throws it in the fire. The kid starts crying. How could you do this? I had to go asking everybody for the money. He says, "I didn't ask you to ask people for money. I want you to learn to go out there and make it yourself." Mm. Wakes up in the morning, says, "Son, this is your last chance. I expect you to make five dollars today." Father goes to work. The kid is going nuts. He's crying. Mom's not going to help him out. Nobody's lending him money anymore. Finally, he goes across the street. There's a mechanic shop. He says, look, I need to show my dad that I can make $5. Can you give me some work? He says, I'm not going to give you $5, but if you move these boxes from here to there, there's 100 of them. It's going to take you a few hours. I'll give you a dollar. He says, but I need $5. He says, I don't care. I'll give you $1. This kid goes, takes him six hours to move these boxes. He's a little kid. Moves these boxes, only makes a dollar. His hands are dirty. He's smelly. He's sweaty. He comes home. Dad's 10 minutes away from coming home. He says, my dad's going to get angry. Things are going to be horrible. Father comes home. He says, son, did you make your $5? He says, no, I didn't make $5, but I made a dollar today. He says, give me that dollar. Takes a dollar, throws it in the fireplace. The kid reaches out to take his money out, and he burns his hand. He says, today, son, you made $1. Mm-hmm. Today, you learn about work ethic and paying the price. I think one of the things is we need to get back to teaching all of us as an example about character, work ethic, the fact that we can mm-hmm. fight our own. You know, I remember... 2001, when 9-11 happened, I got hired at Morgan Stanley, 9-10. I mean, think about that. I got hired 9-10. It's a Monday. Tuesday, it's 9-11. Literally, it's the next day. And things didn't work out, and I went to another firm, and I needed to make some money. I needed to go out there and do something. So uh, I had nothing. I'm in debt, $49,000. I drive a Ford Focus. I'm 6'5". I don't fit in a Ford Focus. You kind of need to (laughs) oil me to to fit in that Ford Focus. But I need to make some money, and I'll never forget. I woke up in the morning. 9-11 9-11 took place. I'd go to downtown. I would buy these shirts that said, United We Stand. Or to buy these flags. Or these shirts that said, Osama, your mama. I know it's pretty funny, but those are the shirts that they sold. Right, and no, I, took I remember those shirts, and I'd go on the corner of Reseda and Nordoff, and I'd sell one shirt for $15, 2 for 20 I bought it at $2. I'd sell it at $10. I'd make $8. I'd do that for a couple months until I finally had some money to pick myself back up on top of having a job. And I think if all of us learned that, listen, at the end of the day, we shouldn't be caught up with this, with this TV shows and Desperate House Men and all this other stuff that's on TV. I'm such a loyal Laker fan, Dodger fan, blah, 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 blah. I have to go out there and watch. But at the same time, we are not. We're watching other people live their dreams. We need to go out there and step up and fight for those people we love the most. And I think we're so capable of doing that. When we do, at the end of the day, it feels like, it feel, as good as people think it feels, it feels a million times better. So, dude, you were Hawkins shirts on a corner <laughs> and you are that. now the boss at people helping people with how many agents wait that's a great resume expert shirt seller we yeah have- no 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 but see but no it's the principle that you were just talking with the kid 2500 like, agents it, for roughly okay so have. you have in a year you have grown to 2500 agents and it, it, and in this economy and it's a financial services company what do you do i still don't have an answer so direct question here i feel like i'm asking a liberal Direct question. What does people helping people offer? What service Great or question. product do they okay, offer? Let me give you an idea. Let's just say I sit down with a family. A family had $100,000 on a 401k. Now it's $70,000. They lost 30%. They're not right. happy about that. Right. They want a product that gives them a guarantee with an upside. And I want to work with a company that offers that product. We find those products. And we work with companies such as ING, Allianz, National Western, North American, many of the companies that are multi-100, 200, $300 billion companies. Okay. So what we do is we take the client XYZ. We see where they're at, where their situation is. We take their portfolio and what they have. We say, if we can find something that's better for you, would you be open to it? We go and bring them back options. And because we work with so many different companies, they see our options. They come back. They say, you know what? I want to roll my money over into this. Not a problem. Okay. And w- our, our system, Frank, you'll appreciate this. We don't do it in our office. We come to your house. Uh, we don't believe in selling on first appointment. We believe in first appointment. We're just going to sit down and talk. If you are impressed with us, if you like what we do, you want us back, not a problem. We'll set up another time. We'll come back to you and we present you the options. And then from there, we'll deliver the policy at the third appointment. So that's the approach we have. And I think right now, if you look at all the challenges financially, how many people have lost money in their 401ks? Oh, yeah. How many, how many baby boomers are at a point right now where they're saying, I can't afford to lose any more money. I need something that's going to give me that safety. We offer that for our clients. All right. So who, how can people get a hold of you? I mean, how can they find people helping people online very simple our website is www.myp 
MyPHPDream.com. MyPHP is people helping people. Dream.com. Or they can call 877-788-4366. Once again, 877-788-4366. And if anybody's on the social networking sites, you can look me up under Facebook or Twitter. Patrick, P-A-T-R-I-C-K, Bet David. Just like people bet in Vegas and David versus Goliath. Just put them together. Bet David, and you can find us there. All right, Patrick Bet David, founder and CEO of People Helping People. He's going to be on Glenn Beck tonight at 11 p.m. That website again, myphpdream.com. And uh, if that resonates with you, and especially the guy's stories, I love the stories, uh, you may you might want to check out People Helping People. Again, that website, myphpdream.com. Patrick, thank you. Quick break.